Hi books, I'm Bug here and welcome back to my channel. So I started playing Firewatch the other day and then when I came to edit it, realised it cut half of the screen off and it just wasn't good enough. It wasn't a huge difference but you couldn't see the subtitles, you couldn't see some of the dialogue in the, the start up of the game that I have to click and pick some things from. So, which was a real big shame. So I have played like the first day of being a Firewatch person. So I'm going to start the game again and I've sorted the issue out for some reason. It wasn't on the right setting. I don't know what happened because I never changed my settings on OBS, but never mind. <laughs> but we're going to start with Firewatch. I'm very excited to play this game. I got it on a weekend deal on Steam. It's no longer on deal, but I will leave the link in the description box below for anybody who wants to download and play the game. So we're going to start a new game today because that one didn't work. <laughs> Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So what's your, you know, major? You. You're pretty. Um, I actually don't know which one to pick. You, you're pretty. So what's, you know, your major? Oh, I'm just going to go with that one. I picked that one last time. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are future hungover. <laughs> what? You replied, confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Oh, the start of a love romance. Let's get my trusty old backpack. And head to my lovely red pickup truck. set off to our journey. You date for over a year. She drive you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's bad ass. I'm going to pick the beagle. I picked the beagle last time. Nice. Bucket's a good dog. And a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30 p.m. and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple of little idiots. That would be pretty good. One day, why rush? That'd be pretty good. Kids are awesome. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. <laughs> you say she's absolutely right. Oh, the start of our adventure. Thoroughfare? Trailhead? I think that says. Do not forget to check in. Two forks. So this is the map. Let's go, go. I didn't know how to run before, but obviously I played the played before, so. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call, you're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad, you ignore her. Uh, I clicked ignore her last time when I played that first episode and 
I don't know why I ended up getting mad, but I'm just gonna pick getting mad. You'll call her an inconsiderate asshole. <laughs> she tells you to fuck, fuck yourself and not to be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. I don't know why. Why do you need to be mad? She went out for a couple of drinks. <laughs> 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. <laughs> He-Man. Let's do some He-Man. You look awesome. Of course I do. <laughs> Let's go. This is such a beautiful game though. It's so visually appealing. It's so nice. Oh, look how beautiful that looks. 1982. During the summer, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Mm, bad idea. Bucket gets kicked. B b b fuck the d dog Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away, you beat his goddamn face in. Scare him away. We don't need to resort to violence. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. You convince her not to take the job. Agree if she commutes back and forth. We'll commute, because if that's the job that she really wants to do, then go for it. By any means, go for it. You'll ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. I think that's a good idea. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two, two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink and wine and try to forget about it. Talk about it. You should always talk about your problems. It's always good to get them off your chest. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. It must be extremely, extremely hard to have onset dementia at such a young age. It's also extremely sad, especially when you have plans to do the kids and stuff. Pick up a journal. <laughs> He-Man. <laughs> yes. Go on, Henry. <laughs> I obviously knew that picture was coming. <laughs> Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over, for no particular reason, and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Poor Julia. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. Right, because I played like this first part of the game the other day, um, I know 
what the outcome is from you are determined to take care of her by yourself because that's what I picked originally and it really affects Henry so I'm actually going to go with the full-time care facility this time and see what that path ends up taking. Henry starts drinking a lot so I'm gonna see where this one takes me. Oh it's so pretty. Let's go Henry. Oh that went really slow there. Oh look a moose. Not a moose, deer. <laughs> Hello! Don't run away! Come back! Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day, then every other day. You get out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide to not see your old friends as much. I think it's really hard for somebody, especially if you love somebody so much, but if they're suffering with dementia, I mean, everyone's got different opinions, they want to look after them for themselves. Me, personally, I would look after them myself because I'm a carer, I know what it's like to deal with dementia patients, so I can deal with dementia patients, but if you're somebody who's never been around a dementia patient before, have no idea how to care for them, the best thing to do is to put them in a care home, and I know it's sad, and I know it's really heart-wrenching but it is better for them to be with people who know what they're doing 1989 Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her she visits her every day you go with her some of the time Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist you won't you've always really liked Susan Months go by, Bucket dies. Aww, poor Bucket. Julia doesn't remember remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in, you, lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more. You think, summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. It's job time. You take it. Fire watch guy. Ooh, we're at the fire watch. Enter the lookout tire, tire, tower. I will speak properly, I swear. Oh, look at the moon, so pretty. I really wouldn't enjoy being up here on my own though, in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I would freak the fuck out. Turn on the power. There we go. Two Forks Tower. Hello. Hello, Delilah. Hey there, Delilah. What's it like in New York City? I always sing that song every time I hear it. I cry. Hello. Uh, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? <laughs> Nothing. People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I like, sleep forever? <laughs> sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Oh. Um, you've killed three ex-husbands. <laughs> you're rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. Um, you killed three ex-husbands. Okay. Uh, You've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. No. Oh, is that it? Not dumped this time. Close? Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. <laughs> Fire watch. Yes, so we've met Henry and we've met Delilah. Day one. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. 
You probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. I don't know where her lookout tower is. I can't get up, so I guess we'll just talk to Delilah. Uh, sorry, I guess I slept in. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Woo. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, where's my west-facing? Fireworks? Yeah. Yep, fireworks. Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. <laughs> Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Yes, ma'am. Uh, like, kick the shit out of them. Can I write them a ticket? I'm not really into discipline. Do I write them a ticket? Just... Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is one, two, three, four. It's actually that for all of them. <laughs> Good code. Secure. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> ah, she knows we're right. So, we've got our compass. We've got a cookbook. I mean, you can pick things up in this, but we can't do anything with them. But we've got the firefinder. Oh, examine? Yeah, we can't do anything. Let's just throw it back down there. Do we need this? Do we need my bag? No. Oh, we pick it up anyway as we go out the door. Let's go. This wood doesn't look very safe, does it? It looks like it's going to blow away. Blow away in the wind. So let's get our trusty map out. Um, find and zoom in. Right, so we're there. Uh, does it have north, east on here? Uh, no, but if that's north, the top there, we <laughs> we need to be heading west. I mean, she did say west. Look out my west facing window. Just follow this path and see where this takes us. I think this is the right way anyway. Let's get the map out again. Uh, cash 306, yep, yeah, right way. Let's go. I'm so freaked out coming down here on my own. <laughs> right, supply cash. I found the supply cash. So there's a lot of these out in the woods. What's the code again? <laughs> so are there a lot of these out in the woods? Yeah, we got them all over the Shoshone. They saved us a lot of back and forth from the trailhead. Don't take all the good Very stuff. Very convenient. Yeah, all right. <laughs> right, open. Um, one, two... Three, four. Easiest code in the whole world. <laughs> no one's going to steal anything out of them. Um, copy information. Ron, hey man. Guy couldn't take it, so I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of these bars you liked hiking in the park. But let's get fucked when I'm back, Dave. Okay then. Uh, can we keep, okay we'll keep it take the rope because that's what we need and then pick up a granola bar let's keep
keep hold of that. I'm not sure why there's a pine cone in a lockbox, but okay. Can we close this? Yeah. I don't think we can relock it though. Right, let's go tell these naughty people off for having fireworks. Am I going the right way? Well, I can hear them. I want to see the fireworks! Oh, they're there. Oh, it looks pretty! Fireworks! Rope hook. Oh, we could have pressed the buttons as well, I forgot about that. No. Oh, 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 poor Henry. <laughs> Had a bit of a tumble there. That might look gross, but that's my smoothie for the morning. <laughs> morning, afternoon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, report climbing accident, okay. Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. Well, be careful for Christ's sake. Uh, hey, there's a tie-off point off here just a little away from the shale slide. Oh, you ready to get back on that horse, huh? Well, I can't go any further is what I'm saying. That heads south down to the creek, but you should be able to get to the lake just by continuing west without any, you know, mountaineering. All right. It's a long summer. You can explore later. <laughs> okay. I think we're going the right way. Let me get my map up again, because I think I'm going a little bit off track. Ah. Uh, yeah, right, this is the right way. I just keep going down here. <laughs> I thought I went a bit off track then. Report Meadow. Hell of a nice camping spot. It is a hell of a nice camping spot down here by the lake. I haven't been down there in years, but yeah, Jonesy Lake area is perfect. Oh, naughty, naughty, littering. Finding a bunch of empty beer cans, they threw them all over hell. The idiots down at the lake? Yeah, them. <laughs> I just found where they're hanging out. Report the backpacks. Well, they left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. Don't worry, I won't. Keep me knickers on. Oh, look, they decided to have a campfire, too. You know, they color-coded the fire danger signs in case people were illiterate. But I guess that doesn't take into account just plain stupid, does it? <laughs> I like Delilah, she's funny. They left half a bottle of whiskey. Decent stuff. Drunk pyromaniacs. Fucking great. <laughs> oh, shit. Ferret or Irish? Yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll keep that for later. Found the fireworks. They didn't even try to hide them. Uh, well, confiscate them. Oh, we meant to pick them up. Okay. Confiscate. What do you know? People with shitty manners drink shitty beer. <laughs> what? You don't like a cold muskwa light on a hot day? No, no, I do. But then again, I didn't say my manners were any good. Better than these fucking litter bugs, though, that's for sure. <gasps> they got some bras hanging. I found a bra. <laughs> a nudie pyromaniac. <laughs> Remain professional. This bit's funny. <laughs> uh, there are, uh, panties. panties. <laughs> like he's scared of saying that. <laughs> I don't want to say that word again. Why, because you're 12? <laughs> yes, I'm 12. Some groovy music they're dancing to. There's a. Uh, ooh. Yes? Uh, there are two naked women. There are two naked ladies out here. <laughs> Can you handle that? Come on, I like naked ladies, same as anyone, but there's 
You know. Two. Two? Yeah. I know this will be tough for you, but try to pick your tongue up off the ground and do your job. Okay. <laughs> oh, Henry, you are funny. I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping. Yeah. That's that looks, that's really there? nice. Oh not the girls, not the teenage. I mean, I don't know if the teenagers, but <laughs> not the naked girls. I meant the sunset in the background. Uh, quit the fireworks shit, or else. Don't pull any more shit, or you're fucked. All right. Don't threaten us. Oh, I just yeah. did. Who the hell are you, creep? Oh, he's just one of those lonely guys who likes to boss people around. Ugh, I know. Duck all of your stuff. The fireworks, the whiskey, you name it. What? Dick. <laughs> also, setting off fireworks out here isn't just stupid, it's illegal. Yeah, so is stealing, asshole. That's so fucking bogus. You're gonna pay for that. Can we just get out of here? Ew, totally. You're gross. You're just some sad man out in the woods. I'm not a sad man. I'm just telling you to sort your shit out. Okay, we can't do anything. Hey, that go okay? Uh, it went fine. It's done. I hope they drowned. I hope they drowned. <laughs> I don't think anyone would mourn a couple of future arsonists. Just gonna go ahead and not log that as a threat. Thanks. <laughs> but seriously, though, thanks for dealing with it. Yeah, no problem, Delilah. I find him funny. The the chemistry between Delilah and Henry is great. <laughs> So we need to find another way around because the rope snapped and I don't know how to get back up but let's get going. I like this though, this looks pretty cool. It wouldn't be very nice running around here at night time, that's for sure. So, I have a bit of a confession to make. Yes? What is it? Um, look, I was, I was drunk last night when I welcomed you to the job. Yeah, well, you're not the first boss to be guilty of that. <laughs> I know, I just, I know I can get a little pushy, you know, putting you on the spot about uh, why you're out here and stuff. Don't worry about it. It's, it's fine. fine. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that sort of a thing to a, to a minimum. Anyway, let me know when you get back to your lookout. Hey, I heard some thunder. Yeah, I've got eyes on a storm out to the north. Well, that's bad, right? Because of the lightning? It just means we'll be busy. Hurry home and try not to get hit by lightning. Oh, well, I'll try. I got hit by lightning when I was nine years old, so I'm safe. It's not going to strike twice and all that. Well, there was an old lookout named Roy Sullivan who got hit by lightning seven times. That's I a lot like of times to get hit by lightning. Yeah, well, if it makes you feel any better, it wasn't what killed him. What killed him? Suicide. Would you believe? Uh -oh. But we found another supply crate. Yay. So let's get that open because we need to copy the map information. I don't know why I just did that. Just go the long way around. There we go. Uh, copy map information. So we're gonna need all of this. What's, well, I didn't say to shut. So why is your horn? Damn! Ah. Bright light. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I just thought it'd be funny. Might not be that funny. Uh, there's a horn in here. There's a horn or an antler or whatever. Well, antlers are made of bone and horns are made of the same stuff as your fingernails. I guess this is a bone. Antler. A ranger must have found it this spring. Okay. Uh, we found a cave. It's a little bit creepy. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon. Thunder Canyon? <laughs> Hey, I didn't name it. But in the cave? I don't know, rocks? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. So... 
so I say fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. Yeah, sure, okay. Great. Used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. Report locked gate. Ah, oh, don't you play with the kids. I can it's all right to hike through here. Report locked gate. This cave is gated off. It's to stop spelunkers from dying without getting the keys from the Forest Service office first. Makes sense. Although, Debbie says she lost them like three years ago, so... Maybe it's mysteries are locked away for good. Ah, damn. Oh, that's rubbish. Yeah, but maybe you can find another one to get your caving kicks in. Oh, this one's so close to home and convenient, though. Aw, sorry, Hank. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> okay, we can't do anything else. <laughs> funny. Funny guy, Hank. Funny, funny guy. It's very dark now. Let's get home. Quick, quick, quick. Quick time. Oh. Hello, who are you? What are you doing? There's some guy out here giving me the creeps. The creeps? Hi then. Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything else? I I don't think so. Henry, there's there's something I something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? <laughs> it's outside. Come on. <laughs> the whole thing. And people come and go as they please. It's 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 madness. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it. Look, bumping into someone in the middle of nowhere is part of the fun. Yeah, Henry, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere, you might meet some hikers. It's bound to happen. It's a bit creepy though, finding just one guy shining a torch in your face as you're walking around in the woods. This is a long way up. Go, 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 Henry! You can do it. Nice. Right, let's go quick because we're. Oh, still got some more to do. It's gonna start thundering and lightning. We need to go. I hope I don't fall all the way back down this. <laughs> Go, go, Henry. Oh, oh. oh. right. Oh. That scared me then. <laughs> hey, we can see the lookout tower. What's this thing here? A wooden sign. Ah. Oh, hello. Hello. You know, I don't think there's any fictional character I hate more than Forrest Burns. Henry, hello. as an employee <laughs> of the Forest Service, that is treason. Yeah, well, he really freaked me out as a kid. He inspired me to spend the bulk of my 30s keeping the wilderness safe. A shrink would have a field day with you. Uh, thanks, Mom. Hey, Burns. What kind of name is Forrest Burns anyway? Well, that would be a Let's pun, come sit you over here. A glorious pun. You can come and sit on this little stone here. Royal butts. Royal? Yeah, butts. just that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think anyone had been named Royal since the 1850s. Uh, his mum was crazy. Well, Royal's mom, Flo, was a bit of a trendsetter. Flo, <laughs> but Oh, man, that's even worse. Yeah, well, it's still better than Forrest Burns. So this generator is all the power I've got out here. Yep, it doesn't go through much gas, and, well, you don't have much in the way of electronics, so... But my... What about my hairdryer? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You might just have to make peace with frizzy locks. I could never. <laughs> I love them too. They're so funny. Um, so it's uh, just the outhouse then, in terms of going to the bathroom? You're a man, Henry. You can go wherever you want. Well, number one at least. And uh, full disclosure, I pee wherever I want as well. Delilah! <laughs> right. Oh, look, a ball. Just throw it. Phew. Nice place to do your business. I wouldn't like to go out here at night. Well, like when it's pitch black. At the moment, it's not too bad. Oh, 
it sounds like something's happening. Typewriter? Where is my typewriter? Uh, oh, yeah. What can I do for you? Well, my typewriter is on the ground, outside of my tower. You right? Yeah, look, uh, the wind? No. How the hell did... You should get inside. Fuck me. <gasps> oh, no. Someone broke in. They what? They just, they wrecked the place. Threw my typewriter out the window. Motherfucker. Holy shit. Um, I'll let the Forest Service know what happened. How did she not see anything in the other towers? Which I want to know. We're gonna have to fix the window. Tomorrow, Henry, you won't be cold. Okay. No part of it. No. <laughs> Still My fucking sheet. sheets are gone. They stole your. Okay, I put in a call. That was fast. Yeah, well. Do you have any idea who could have done this? Nope. None. The girl at the lake, maybe the guy in the canyon, uh, the I girls. did probably piss off the girls at the lake. Ugh, fuck them. Well, I'll have the rangers keep an eye out for a couple of young women and question any they find. I can't believe someone would do this. I worry about bears and fires and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about some, what, violent campers? Uh, okay, in the morning I'm going to call my friend Patty, who works the desk down in Cody. They keep a list of everyone who's officially been in and out of the trailhead since, I don't know, forever, and see if we can get a list of names. We won't get much, but at least if anything else happens, we can refer to it and see if anything comes up. Thanks. Yep. Let's see if... I need uh, you to feel safe out here. I don't. Don't worry. Just tell me where to find a gun. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Oh, you can protect yourself, huh? I just don't worry about it. Perfect. Keep that attitude up, and you'll have an excellent summer. Right now, Delilah. Day two. Right, so I'm actually going to leave that episode here at day one and see what happens in day two in the next episode. So I haven't played the episode after this now. This is where I got up to on my first video I recorded before it didn't work. <laughs> So the rest of it's kind of a mystery to me and I don't know anything that's going to be happening and I don't know like what sort of things we, we're going to have to do. But I really enjoy this so far. I really like the dialogue between Henry and Delilah. I think they've really got good chemistry and it seems like they'll end up making a good friendship. I wonder if we'll see Delilah. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and tune in tomorrow for episode two. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.